Hi, there's a control on your oscilloscope that you're almost certainly familiar with, but you may not know two advantages to actually using it. And it's what's called a fine vernier control on your vertical channel. And you'll see that it says push for fine here. And most modern oscilloscopes will have uh, pushable controls, not only pushable on the uh, position adjust so that you push it and the waveform goes to the center of the screen like this, or you can push your volts per division control like this, and you'll see channel one scale is now fine, and you can adjust it in much finer steps. But why is that useful? So you're familiar with your uh, volts per division control. You can see it up here, one volt uh, per division. It's usually in a one, two, five sequence. It, that can vary depending on the manufacturer. So you'll get uh, like one volt per division, two volts, five volts. You'll get one millivolt, two millivolts, five millivolts, 10, 20, 50, 100, 200, 500, and so on. So you adjust it in large steps. But as you can see, sometimes the waveform can get too large. And if, you, if we just center that there like this, okay, it's taking up a good lot of the screen here like this but well, let's just get rid of that but if we go up there ah oh, sorry it's off the screen so if we push that we can get a fine vertical adjust like this so that we can make it any size we want well what's the point of that you might ask well there's actually two advantages to this the first advantage is in comparing waveforms let me center both of these waveforms here i'll push the center and you can see that they're not the same voltage but they're both one kilohertz sine waves and they look pretty identical and if you make it bigger like that we can make this one a bit bigger they look pretty identical don't they but well let's go in there and have a look are they identical but let's push our fine vernier control and actually adjust channel one until it matches channel two like this and if we go in like that we can see that there's little subtle differences in there between the two, two channels they're not quite the same are they and that's the first advantage of your fine vernier control so you won't be able to see it if it's like that or like that for example you can't see it but when you make them even that makes a big difference so that's very useful but you might be familiar with that let's go to the second reason and the second reason you might want to use your vernier control is the subject of this video. How to make your measurements on your oscilloscope. This is one of the advantages of digital oscilloscopes is that you can actually uh, take measurements of the waveform. There have been some analog oscilloscopes in the past that could do measurements and stuff like that, but they're usually cursor based. When you've got stuff in the digital domain, you can measure things accurately. Anyway, let's take a look. We've just got a uh, one kilohertz sine wave here, four volts peaked peak and because we've only got eight uh, divisions total vertical here you can see that it is basically using up all of the screen but if we go into measure here and we actually try and measure the peak to peak voltage we can get rid of those statistics there we go you'll notice that it's not actually calculating anything here it's not able to because the waveform is just a couple of samples couple of pixels outside of the window so it can't measure that it can't trust me that is actually real-time updating there so it can kind of give you the value down here but you're not going to be able to get any of your statistics you're not going to be able to get your mean value and see your standard deviation um siglent is ridiculous by the way look at this <laughs> 0, 0.0 picovolts give me a break you usually won't see that kind of stuff on a bigger brand instrument the software should know that that is a ridiculous value and it shouldn't even display it unbelievable anyway so what we have to do of course is change our range down like this to one volt uh, per division and now it can actually start measuring I'll restart that just in case Always restart your statistics after you change ranges, uh, time bases, anything like that, because there might be some accumulated error there or something like that, just to be sure. And we should eventually get a standard deviation value. You can see the mean value, 4.12 volts. It's got uh, two decimal places of resolution there. And I don't know why it doesn't give us a standard deviation value straight away. Other scopes I've got here, they all give it to you straight away. But... Siglent takes time. Oh, 0 0.01 picovolts. I, unbelievable. Oh, actually, this 0 0.02. I, <laughs> this was working before. Trust me. Have I found a bug? I don't think I'm using the latest firmware. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm not. Uh, let me just upgrade the firmware here. I'll get back to you. No, unfortunately, the new firmware doesn't make this 
work. We still have the same problem. I swear it was working before. I did a quick test before this video just to make sure it was going to do the business and nah. What the? Okay, I changed to two volts per division and it's working now. So if we turn the statistics off and on, effectively resetting them, give it a couple of counts and or a dozen or two, and it should, there we go. We've, we now have a mean value, 4.24 volts. We're measuring the peak to peak voltage and a standard deviation. So this is like the like the spread of the values that it's actually getting because there's noise and, and sampling error and other stuff on the signal. Okay, so effectively, 25 millivolts is the spread of the measurements that it's getting. No, still not working. Damn annoying. Anyway, I can still show you what I'm talking about. So remember that figure, 25 millivolts standard deviation and two decimal places here, okay? So let's go up. So as I showed before, if we change the time base to 500 millivolts per division, it's just outside, it can't measure it, okay? So this is where our vernier can come in. We can push, hence it says variable there. We can go in and just get it under until it starts displaying our value. And bingo, what do you know? Look at the standard deviation there. It is smaller than what we had before. Let's reset that. Look at that. Nine odd millivolts. Effectively, we have a more accurate measurement, even though on this particular signal scope, it hasn't given us any extra resolution here, but on other scopes, it will. And the reason it's going to give you a smaller standard deviation here or smaller error in, you can think of the standard deviation as the um, uncertainty in your signal. Basically, the reason that it's smaller, which is better, it's i.e. it's more accurate in quote marks, is that it has more uh, bits from your ADC to work with than it did when the signal's down here like this. You remember, we've only got an 8-bit analog to digital converter. So if your signal's right down here like this, Let's, let's go down to five volts per division, shall we? And, ah, oh, it doesn't work down there either. Ridiculous. I'm giving up on this Siglent scope. All right, let's check out the Roden Schwartz scope. This one actually uses a 10-bit ADC, as you've uh, heard about before, which is better than the 8-bit ADC used in most other scopes. I've changed, because we have uh, 10 divisions here, I've changed it to uh, 5.2 volts peak to peak. So you'll see the tips of the waveform there, top and bottom, just outside the range. So you'll notice it can't measure the peak to peak voltage. It says it's clipping. I love that it actually says clipping there plus minus. That's, that's very nice. If we actually change our vertical scale here, this is the best scale that we can get uh, that actually has it all on screen. That's gonna give us a reading. We'll reset the stats there. And look at this. I mean, we're getting four decimal places on the standard deviation, four decimal places on the, uh, uh, the current, that's not current, current as in amps that's current value and the mean value so 9.6 standard deviation okay let's go down a range reset bingo 15 millivolts standard deviation it's got more error even though it's got that gorgeous big 10-bit analog to digital converter it's still going to give you a a, a greater error a greater variance in uh, your values and we'll go down again look at that 60 millivolts. Reset that now. There we go. So you can see how that change in the range actually upset that value. That's upset the apple cart there. So you've got to reset your stats. Is that could that be a bug? Yeah. 36 millivolts. But if we hit our vernier, go all the way with LBJ, let's go until it's just lower than that. Bingo. Reset. Our error standard deviation is now 5.7. We're getting a more accurate reading. Brilliant. And watch this. You see how we've got four decimal places at the moment, but if we change it to a smaller one, it, bingo, we drop back to two decimal places on our current value. It's still showing the mean as four decimal places because you can get a mathematically higher thing. But the scope's smart enough to know I'm not going to give you these uh, BS extra digits in there, those four digits, when I know very well that I can't do that. That's the scope saying that. So it only gives you the two decimal places. Very nice. So there you go. That's a neat way, using your vernier, to maximise the accuracy of your scope. Now... Of course, it must be said that oscilloscopes are inherently not 
that absolute accurate. Go and check out the specs for the scopes. I don't know what the Roden Schwartz is offhand, but you know, they're in the order of like 1% uh, absolute error, half a percent, you know, like even a couple of percent uh, absolute error. So they're not the best things in the business for measuring absolute values. But hey, if you're measuring difference between signals and things like that, uh, all that extra resolution matters. And let's use our uh, Keysight 3000 uh, T series. I couldn't use the uh, low end uh, 1200X series because it doesn't have the uh, statistics measurements. And you can see that our standard deviation, 1.3 millivolts. If we go down like that, let's reset our stats again. 3.7, look at this, you can see our error increase in eight. But if we turn on our vernier and go right near the top there, and reset, ah, oh, 1.2 millivolts standard deviation. Beautiful. And just like the Roden Schwartz, we've got four decimal places there and it's smart enough to know that if we actually go down, bingo, we drop a decimal place because, well, anything else is just BS. And the new Rigol 7000 series, let's reset our statistics there. And we're looking at 15 millivolts standard deviation, 13, something like that. And if we go down, it's reset it, but we'll reset it anyway. Bingo, look at that, it's more than doubled, 35 millivolts. And go right down, 84 millivolts, horrible, but if we turn our vernier on, give that a bit of a clicky, and oh, you can see, this is a good example, it hasn't updated, you can see how many bits it's got to play with here, not many. Um, it, yeah, this Rigol scope is just slow, it's not updating as I turn that um, thing, but that, that actually gives you, hey, that's, you know, it's really quite neat, it gives you a representation of how many bits it's playing with there, not many is the answer, so that's why the standard deviation error is larger, and right down here, 11 millivolts, no, 8, 7, 6, dropping a little bit, 5, so there you go, you can get extra uh, resolution on your waveform on practically any oscilloscope that does these sorts of measurements. And by the way, you don't necessarily have to have these uh, standard, uh, like these statistic measurements here. Uh, just know that the, just be confident that when your scope, you use that vernier control to adjust it to a, like near enough to full scale like that without clipping, your regular, just your regular without the statistics, let's turn the statistics off, even without that, you know, or you can be fairly confident that your figure down here for your peak-to-peak uh, -peak measurement or whatever measurement you're doing is going to be uh, more precise, so to speak. And just be aware the similar thing can happen on horizontal measurements as well. In this case, we're measuring the frequency. We're doing this uh, via the samples. We're not using the hardware uh, frequency counter. Actually only running with uh, 10K uh, sample points at the moment. So not many sample points. This is just to show you that it does actually work. And you can see that at one kilohertz we're like one decimal place there on the uh, frequency and we're one decimal place on the standard deviation so that's 54 so let's actually change our increase our time base so that we get more stuff bingo we've got two decimal places there on our standard deviation but in the case of the horizontal um, the standard deviation actually works in the opposite way if we go one waveform, like you know, just basically one and a bit cycles or two cycles on the screen or whatever, you can see that our standard deviation is quite high. But if we get more waveforms on the screen, our standard deviation goes down. So it actually works opposite to how it does on the vertical. But then you uh, can get extra digits over here by zooming in like that. So it, it depends on how you want it. Yeah. But with today's deep memory scopes and things like that, it, the main advantage isn't on uh, any horizontal stuff with the horizontal vernier, but you can really get some advantages in measurement accuracy with your vertical vernier. So there you go. I hope you learned something there and you found that interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below. Catch you next time.